Hey guys! Alright, today we are going to talk about how to find the area of composite figures. Make sure you write down everything you see on the screen and make sure you write down everything that I write down. Your objective for today, you will be able to determine the area of composite figures. Well, first of all, what is a composite figure? Well, a composite figure is just a figure that is made up of two or more geometric figures. So if we look at the examples below, we see that this figure right here contains a semicircle and it contains a triangle. So that's two different figures. Right here in the middle, we have got two rectangles, this one and this one, or you could look at it this way. It could be this rectangle and this rectangle. And then over here, we've got a triangle, another triangle, and then a rectangle in the middle. So when we find the area of a composite figure, the first thing that we want to do is break the figure into smaller shapes, just like you saw me do on the previous page. So I'm going to use this figure as an example. I am going to take this and I'm going to break it apart right here so that I have two rectangles. Now I want to label the side measurements of each smaller shape because I have to know my dimensions. So if we look at this rectangle right here, we see that it is 34 by 8. So we don't have anything to label there. But then up here, we have another rectangle. Okay, We know that this side is 20 because this side is 20. And then over here we know this side is 12. So we know this side will also be 12. So the dimensions of this rectangle are just going to be 20 by 12. Then you want to find the area formula for each piece. So on this rectangle, it would be area equals base times height. Same for this one. We would find the area of the pieces. Then we would add them together to find the sum. And then if we have a shaded, reason, or shaded region, we're going to subtract the difference in areas if one shape lies within another. Now in this example, there's not a shaded region, so we simply just add the area of this ring, a rectangle to the area of this rectangle. So let's go ahead and do some examples together. All right, keep in mind all the steps are right here on the side, and then all the formulas that you need to know for the area of figures are going to be right here. So in example one, we want to find the area of this composite figure. So the first thing I want to do is break the figure into smaller pieces. So I see that I have a triangle right here. And then I've got a rectangle here. And then I've got another rectangle right here. And now I want to find what each side measures. All right, so I know that this entire side right here is 15, but right now I just want to know what each little piece represents. So if I look up here, this measures 5. That means that down here, this little part right here is going to measure 5. Now this whole entire side is 15, not this section right here. So 15 is for the whole entire side. If this section is 7, that means this is also going to be 7. 5 plus 7 is 12. That means this little part would have to measure 3, so that the whole side equals 15. Now, over here, I want to figure out what this piece measures. Well, if I know that the whole entire side is 10, 10 minus 6 is 4, so this little piece would have to be 4 which means this little piece would also have to be 4. Okay, now I want to figure out what formulas I need. So I have a triangle right here. So I know that I need area equals base times height divided by 2 for this triangle. Now for this rectangle right here, that is a quadrilateral. So I know I need area equals base times height and for this rectangle, I know I need area equals base times height. So now I am just going to find the area for all three of those. 
Okay, so what I have done is I have separated this into three sections so I can find the area of all three parts. So first of all, I'm gonna start with this triangle. So that is area equals base times height divided by two. The base of this triangle is three, and then the height is gonna be four. Remember, base and height have to intersect perpendicularly. So that means area equals a base of three times a height of four divided by two. So area equals three times four is 12. So we've got 12 divided by two and area equals six. And these are inches, so six inches squared. So I have the area of the triangle. Now I wanna find the area of this rectangle. So that's area equals base times height. In this rectangle, we have a base of seven and a height of four. So area equals seven times four. So that area equals 28 inches squared. Now I wanna find the area of this rectangle. So area equals base times height. The base of this rectangle is five and the height is 10. So my area equals five times 10. So the area equals 50 inches squared. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all three of those areas and I'm simply just gonna add them all together. So I am gonna take 50 plus 28 plus six. Eight plus six is 14, carry the one. One plus five is six plus two is eight. So the total area of this figure is 84 inches squared. All right, example two, we wanna find the area of this composite figure. So the first thing I wanna do is break this into smaller shapes. So I can form a rectangle here, and then I can form another rectangle here, and I'm gonna make that line a little straighter. And I have another rectangle right here. Now I want to find each side so that I have the dimensions of all of the smaller shapes. So I'm gonna start with this rectangle right here. This rectangle, that's gonna have a base of eight and a height of two. So we already have our two dimensions for this rectangle. Now for this rectangle right here, we know that it has a height of six, but I need to know what this section measures right here. Well, if this entire side is eight and this piece is five, that means this piece right here would have to be three. So my dimensions for this rectangle are gonna be three and six. And for this rectangle right here, it's gonna have a base of five and a height of two. Now I want to write down the formulas I'm gonna need. These are all rectangles. So for each one, I need area equals base times height. Okay, so again, I have split this into three different sections so that I can solve for the area of each of the three rectangles. So I am gonna start with this top rectangle. So area equals base times height. This has a base of eight and a height of two. So area equals eight times two. And area equals 16 centimeters squared. All right, now I'm gonna go back to this middle rectangle. So area equals base times height. So area equals, we've got a base of three and a height of six. And then three times six is 18. So we have 18 centimeters squared. Now I'm gonna solve for the area of this final rectangle. So area equals base times height. So this rectangle, it has a base of five and a height of two. And then we know that five times two equals 10, and those are centimeters squared. So now I have the area for all three of those rectangles. 
So now I just want to add together so that I can get the sum and find the total area. So that's going to be 16 plus 18 plus 10. 6 plus 8 is 14. And I've got four ones. That makes four. So my total area is 44 centimeters squared. Before I move on, I just want to point out that you want to be very careful with your dimensions. So see like I did on this rectangle, I underlined the base and I underlined the height so that I knew my dimensions when I needed to solve. Same thing with this rectangle, I've underlined the base and the height so that I know what to multiply. And then in this rectangle, I know that my dimensions are 6 times 3. Be very careful and make sure you've identified each dimension for every small shape. All right, example three. Now we wanna find the area of the shaded region. So what we need to do is determine what shapes we have here. Well, on the outside, we have a square, and we know that because this side measures 27, and this side measures 27. So that's gonna have four equal sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and label the other sides. Now, we have a smaller square inside it's 12, 12, and then, of course, this side would measure 12, and so would this one. So what I want to do is I want to take the area of this big square, and I'm going to subtract out the area of this smaller square, and that's just going to leave us with this shaded region right here. So since I have two squares, those are quadrilaterals, so I know I need the formula area equals base times height. Okay, so I have put sections on the page again. I've separated it so I can find the area of each square. So I'm going to find the area of this big square. So area equals base times height. I know that the base of the bigger square is 27 and the height is 27. So area equals 27 times 27. And then I'm just going to work that out. 27 times 27. 7 times 7 is 49. 2 times 7 is 14. Plus 4 is 18. Put my 0. 7 times 2 is 14. Carry the 1. 2 times 2 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. And then I am just going to add all of that together. And I get 700. 29. So my area equals 729 inches squared, and I'm going to underline that. All right, now I want to find the area of the smaller square. So again, area equals base times height. The base is 12, and the height is 12, so area equals 12 times 12. And you should have your 12 times table memorized. And you should know that 12 times 12 is 144. And that would be inches squared. I'm still not done though. I want the area of the shaded region. So I've got to take this out of that big area. So that means I've got to take the total area of 729, subtract out the area of the unshaded region, which is 144. And then I'm just going to subtract. So that means the area of the shaded region is 585 inches squared. All right, now it is time for you to try. I want you to find the area of this composite figure. And then I want you to find the area of just the shaded region of this composite figure. Now in this picture, I do want to point out, this is a circle. The picture, um, it's, a little, it's a little squeezed together, but just treat this like a normal circle. Make sure you complete both of these problems so that you can get full credit on your notes. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next class day.